Views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to the special OAA Now football preview show. This is the gold edition. I am Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OAA, host of Last Week Brain Cells, and the host of Between Tomatoes on Oriented Intelligent. I'd like to welcome those watching on Ori Neighborhood Television and also those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud. Of course, this is gonna, we're going to preview the Gold Division this week, followed by the Blue Division next week, and then we'll have the White in two weeks and the Red in three weeks. So let's look, without further ado, let's look at our teams here in this division. Of course, we're going to go with the A- Avondale Yellow Jackets. Of course, last season, Auburn Hills Avondale uh, made the postseason, um, but they lost in the first round to Birmingham Brother Rice. So they made some changes off season. Corey Bell no longer coaching the Yellow Jackets. He is now at Lake Orion. Enter coach Bob Meyer. We know the reputation he's had at Livonia Clarenceville and also at Walled Lake Central. So here he is at the podium talking about the Avondale Yellow Jackets. It is truly a blessing to be here with everyone to celebrate all the incredible schools, the players, and like Coach Harrington, the coaches that represent the OAA. I'm Bob Meyer, I'm the new head football coach at Auburn Hills Avondale. Coming from Livonia Clarenceville and Wall Lake Central in the past, I had epic playoff battles with many teams in the OAA, and now I'm excited to compete every week with the finest programs in the state. Upon arriving at Avondale though, I was blown away by the beautiful facilities, the administrative, and the community support. I was aware of the reputation that Avondale has for having numerous athletes. But I'm quickly realizing that this might be the understatement as we return six all-league players from last year. This list includes senior running back B.B. Noah Bates, senior running back linebacker captain Miles Moore, senior running back linebacker and captain Matt Lloyd, junior running back D.B. and captain Justin Greer Sykes, junior wide receiver DB and captain Cooper Beaufre, as well as our senior kicker, Hunter Petrus. This is a solid nucleus. We're also excited to have returning senior starting quarterback, captain Tyler Herzog, and senior captain transfer from Warren D. LaSalle, Eric Kristoff. These players, along with senior lineman Joey Wall, Cam Washington, John Paolo Elias, junior Charlie Killian, allow us to achieve our season goals. In order for our program to do this though, some things had to change. And it begins with a singular program focus on developing a punishing run game. This new focus on running the ball and controlling the clock will complement the efficient passing game that we already have and create balance in our football universe. Our defense will be technically sound, physical and fast. But finally, our special team unit will be dynamic. Create turnovers, move the chains, and at times score points. Each of these phases will become the identity of Avondale football. And let me be clear, I was brought here for one specific job, and we will finish that job. Thank you for having us. Avondale's been known for a very good passing attack. They do return a quarterback in Tyler Herzog, Cooper Volfrey, Justin Sykes, and of course, bringing back Aaron Krishnoff from Warren D. LaSalle. Um, so when you look at the Yellow Jackets, 23 and 16, 2018, been really consistent, despite whoever's been coaching the program there. Um, they've got some questions to adjust, particularly in the postseason. Of course, they're in Division Three for the playoffs. So I caught up in an interview with Coach Meyer talking about the expectations for Avondale going forward and the changeover from more of a passing attack to more of a balance attack. I got Avondale coach Bob Meyer here. Coach, um, I remember the interview on the podium. I mean, like, some really interesting words you said up there. We are working on learning how to compete and finish and bring it, and we have expectations for the season, so we're going to back that up. Talk about your ground attack. You wanted to be like, I remember when you were at Walt Lake Central, you installed the Veer attack, and at Livonia Clarenceville, I think you installed some of that too. So talk about a little bit of that attack you're going to install in the Auburn Hills. My background has been Veer and Wing T, uh, back from my Walled Lake days as well. So we're going to be a Wing T football team. You're going to see Buck Sweep 
play after play after play. How's Tyler been? Tyler has been great. And matter of fact, he's been learning how to not only throw the ball, which he was really good at that, as we all know, but he's an athlete. He can run too. So he's a dual threat athlete. So we're excited. What is your expectation this year, Coach? Our expectations are we're going to compete for our division, we're going to qualify for the playoffs, and we're going to win playoff football games at home. That's our goal. Thank you really much, Coach. Thank you so much for having me. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you. Mm -hmm. When you look at Avondale, they haven't won a um, playoff game since 2011. I remember um, back, back then, I do remember that year. So when you look at Avondale, I'm curious to see how the transition is going to be from a, from a perennial Throwing attack to a very good to a um, very good wing T like formational attack. I mean they have the athletes for sure. The schedule very interesting. Of course they do open up the year against Warren Cousineau. Of course the um, Patriots. Um, it was a rematch. Avenue won that one last year in Warren. Um, so it'll be very interesting there in that one. Um, of course Warren Cousineau was a playoff team a year ago. So it's going to be really interesting to see how this matchup goes there. Um, week two, they take on Ortonville Brandon. Brad Zuby, um, we know Zuby, Zuby does know the OA very well when he was at Pontiac, when he was also at Stony Creek. So, it, and Brandon's been a perennial playoff team. They got a very good player as well over there in Ortonville Brandon. So that'd be a really tough matchup for Avondale going up against the um, Blackhawks of Ortonville Brandon. Week three, take on the Berkeley Bears. Of course, this is a really interesting matchup. Um, Two different styles. Berkeley, pretty young team. Avondale, we know, very experienced team. I think the game, a lot of people are going to circle on that schedule is going to be the game with Ferndale, September 15th. It's going to be really interesting how that one's going to go. That game could very well decide the OA gold title this season there. Um, week five, they take on Oak Park. Of course, we don't know what Oak Park team's going to show. Um, for Avondale, it could be a heck of a game between those two teams. I mean, like, obviously, you know, Avondale's got a lot of experience. Oak Park, you know, we're curious to see how they do in the blue this year. Um, Royal Oak, September 29th, of course, Avondale's had their way with Royal Oak in the past. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see how um, that matchup goes there. Um, week number six, they take on, Roy week number seven, actually, they take on um, Seaholm. This could be a really good game because two teams run the veer, I mean, like, Avondale's going to run a wing T type formation. See home running the veer. Who knows what this matchup could be? It could be a low scoring game or it could be a real high scoring game. Those two teams, they know each other quite well. It's going to be a really interesting matchup there. Um, October 13th, Avondale plays Pontiac at home. Um, it's going to be interesting there. I mean, like, I'm curious to see. Avondale's had their way with Pontiac. Of course, Pontiac's had their struggles. Um, so it'll be really interesting there in that one. And then week nine, uh, close out the year. They had to Warren to take on Warren Fitzgerald. It's another rematch. Um, of course, Avenel won that one against the um, Spartans. Um, so when you look at Avenel's schedule, there should be no reason why this team shouldn't be a playoff team. I mean, considering the athletes they have, the experience they have. And when you look at the Yellow Jackets, for sure, this is going to be a team that I think could make some serious, serious noise this year. And being in the, in the gold division, I think Avondale, you've got to put them up there with some of the um, top notch teams, not only in this division, but also in division three, considering that that's where they're going to be at. They could give teams like, well, like Western problems. They could definitely give team like, um, you know, maybe a Birmingham brother Rice some trouble. I mean, like obviously division three, you know, where Avondale was going to be at, could you just imagine a playoff match between Wall Lake Western and Avenue? That could be a crazy, crazy matchup, to say the least there. Um, let's go now from Division with Avondale, team in Division 3, to a team that's in Division 2, which is, oh, sorry. Uh, uh, yep. Let's go to from Avondale to Berkeley. I mean, obviously, Berkeley last year, um, the me over we thing, I mean, like, that really hindered this team last year. Um, so when you look at Berkeley, they've had some struggles. I mean, two. I mean, they were 12 and six the prior two years. So, Berkeley coach Sean Shields was not at the, at media day. He brought his assistant with him. So here he is at the podium talking about the Bears. Just feeling under the weather. We got a young team this year. Uh, looking forward to Week One against Wall Lake Central. Should be one of our toughest matchups all year. And now I'm going to pass it on to the boys because I didn't have anything like that. <laughs> Uh, my name is Mari Bell. 
uh, play guard and tap D tackle. I'm ready to start the season off hard and get ready. Uh, I'm Matt Oxmanga. I play tight end and linebacker. I'm just excited to play this year. I'm Sonny Callis. I play quarterback, senior. I'm just excited to go out there one more time with the guys and uh, leave it out on the field. I'm Rodan Bushy. Uh, I play receiver and DB, and I'm excited for the season. So as I mentioned, of course, when you look at Berkeley, the question's going to be is the culture. Obviously, they had that. You know, when you go two and seven, you know something's got to change. I mean, like obviously, they've had some games where they should not have lost last year. But when you look at Berkeley, you know they do. They don't have any returning starters on defense. They got three players returning on offense. So with Shields not being here at media day, I did have catch up with Shields on the podcast. So. Here's my podcast with Coach Sean Shields talking about the mix. Um, we got Berkeley Coach Sean Shields here, of course. And Coach, um, welcome back to the pod here. It's been, I think we've been doing this for three years now. Yeah, I think that's about right. Sounds, uh, sounds accurate. Yeah. I mean, like, last year it was like, what the heck happened here? I mean, you were 12-6 and six going the right direction, and you go 2-7 and seven last year. So, what the heck happened? Um... Unfortunately, we just didn't mesh well last year. Um, we brought in a new OC, and um, the kids just weren't picking up the playbook. Um, you know, unfortunately, we had some guys that, you know, had some offers and uh, decided they didn't need to come up to the weight room. And it just, we, we need to hit the reset button this year and try to get back to, you know, the mentality that with, uh, we had built on. and less of the uh, me and more of the we mentality. So we had a lot of me mentality last year, and it just it kind of killed us. And when you look at that mentality, you know what I mean? Obviously, you look at it with the culture we're in now, you know, I mean, you look at these offers, you know, I mean, like, it, and, and, it's a, and it's a challenge, obviously, um, and, and it sometimes it comes back to kill you. But when you look at, when you look at Berkeley football and – you know, you kind of, you had your ups and downs, peaks and valleys. Um, you know, and then you look at the off season. You know, coming up. Um, and then you look at what you've done this off season. Um, any changes that you made this off season to change the commitment, the mental mindset of the team? Um. Yeah. Um. You know, we've uh, we've gotten ourselves a uh, uh, strength and conditioning coach on the roster now um, with uh, Jocko Blary and. Um, you know, instead of me being the guy up there every day, we've got a guy that's been committed to that. He's been doing great getting turnout going up there. Um, our defensive coordinator, Mike Winborn, he's been up there every day. Um, just getting kids excited about working out and, you know, getting back to winning and everything else. Um, it's we're, we're, we're young this year, but the mentality around the program is, you know, we're going to beat people by outworking them. Um, and it's really shown with uh, Coach Winborn and uh, Coach Larry and really pushing guys to get in the weight room and, and be at workout. Talk about your standout players. Obviously, you look at Berkeley. Um, I know there's been a lot. I mean, like, how's your quarterback situation going? Um, how's your um, – any standout players that OA Nation needs to know about when it comes to Berkeley this year? Um, so, right now, um, quarterback situation, uh, you know, right now, Sonny Cadillus is getting – all of the number one reps, um, you know, the kid's got a great arm. Um, you know, he can move around a little bit. Uh, we're just trying to, you know, get his eyes to match his arm um, out on the field. And once those link up, I think we, we got a kid that's kind of special right now. Um, you know, and it's he's gotten a couple offers already, but that's going to the, the culture change of, He's had everything. He's working. He's got guys out on the field without the coaching staff putting stuff together. You know, he gets the boys up the hurley to throw, run routes. Um, you know, really excited for him to take in as the leadership role this year as the quarterback. Um, we've got uh, a couple other seniors, uh, Maddox Mangahas. Uh, he's going to come in play tight end for us this year, possibly some D end. And uh, Fidel Traylor, um, big body receiver that we're, we're excited about. Um, 
hopefully he can come out there and make some plays for us and uh, get us some wins. We're going to – right now we're looking at we're probably going to have to pull up, you know, at least five, six sophomores just because this year being – the senior class being that COVID year freshman class mm-hmm. and numbers hurting so bad. Uh, we're you know we're gonna have to ask a lot of young guys to step up and try to make some plays for schedule. Um, obviously, let's look at your defense. Obviously, you know you had some struggles last year. Anybody on the defensive side that OA Nation needs to know about? Um, so our our uh, DC is kind of changing up the defense a little bit this year. Um, and we're really excited about uh, a couple of the sophomores. Uh, they're gonna wind up playing linebacker for us. Um. And, um, you know, it's going to wind up being a, a matter of just scheming everything um, instead of, you know, the, the the standout, you know, like a Henry Pennington, you know, leading the, the defense type deal. This is going to be a complete group effort and just everyone rallying to the ball and trying to disguise things best we can to confuse. The kids are seeming like they're getting a good grasp of it. So it's, it's going to be more of a, a, you know, like I said, a we defense this year than having any true big standouts before i let you go um what is your expectations this year coach um coach what is your expectations uh, my expectations every year sammy are what they are every year if, if i if they change then i may as well stop coaching it to win the league um you know we haven't gotten there yet um we've gotten pretty damn close a couple of times <laughs> but uh the the expectation every year is we want to bring home a, a league title and then we'll let the chips fall after that. But uh, that's every year. Let's let's win our league and uh, we'll go from there. Berkeley coach Sean Shields, um, thank you for joining us on the podcast. I will see you on media day um, coming up later in the um, um at the beginning of the month of August. So coach Sean Shields, thank you for joining us this week and um good luck this season. Thank you, Sammy. Have a great one. You too. When you look at the Bears' schedule, obviously, you look at Berkeley, the expectations, they have to be better than they were last year. Um, the schedule, of course, they got, they open up the year August 20, the um, 5th against Wald Lake Central, of course. That's going to be a very interesting matchup at Hurley Field um, when you look at the Bears. Um, I just think when you look at the matchup here, who, I mean, Wald Lake Central, pretty young team, but they got some experience back. Berkeley, we know, is going to be a very young team there. Um, then September 1st, they take on Troy Athens. I mean, this is going to be an interesting matchup because, you know, Berkeley and Athens have had some wars. They've had some battles. And curious to see how the matchup is going to be with Berkeley taking on a Troy Athens team. It's going to have a lot more veteran experience. Um, curious to see how the matchup, quarterback matchup between Parker Sherlock and Sonny Cabbage is going to be. I mean, Sonny Cabbage, one of those guys I'm really excited to see how he does this year. I mean, really high on him for the last two years. Um, Then they play Abigail. I mean, this is going to be a tough matchup for Berkeley. I mean, they're going to have to really, it's going to be a matchup of different styles. Can they solve the wing tee? Obviously, we know, um, of course, Coach Sean Shields went up against Bob Meyer when he was at Lavoni Clarenceville. I remember the game they won last, that year. That was a big moment for Coach Sean Shields. Big program win at the time. When um, when Berkeley went into Laboni Clarenceville and beat the um, and beat a very good Laboni Clarenceville team, I do remember that very well. I, re- I shared the story with Coach Sean Shields about that. Um, week four, take on Seaholm. Um, this is another. It's a Seaholm's a team that runs a veer. Avondale's gonna be a team that wants a wing T this year. Um, it's gonna be interesting. I mean, it's going to be just interesting to say the least when you look at that matchup there. Week five, Berkeley takes on Pontiac. Um, Berkeley goes to on Pontiac this year. It's going to be a real interesting matchup, to say the least there. Um, week six, they take on Ferndale. I mean, this one, another rivalry game. Tough matchup. It's going to be interesting because Ferndale's got a lot of experience back. Berkeley, we know they don't have a lot of experience coming back. Week seven. They take on Troy. Um, of course, Berkeley and Troy, they've had some battles in the past. Um, just very curious to see how this one goes there. Week 8, battle for the battle for the street sign between Lexington and Catalpa. This year's game's at Hurley. Um, actually, it's at Lexington this year. Um, so when you look at the matchup between Berkeley and Royal Oak, 
Berkeley, this was one of Berkeley's two wins last year was they knocked off Royal Oak. And then week nine, taking on a wing T team, another wing T team in St. Clair Shores Lakeview. Of course, the Huskies, we know, well known for running that offense. It's going to be an interesting matchup at Hurley Field between those two teams. Um, and I look at what Berkeley this year, if Sonny Cabbage can have a heck of a year, I expect that win total to go back up and those losses start coming down. I think the key to the whole team is going to be Sonny Cabbage. If he can lead Berkeley to at least, maybe at least five, six wins this year, maybe, just maybe Berkeley could be back. Maybe they could be a postseason team this year. I mean, there is a lot of questions with Berkeley. I mean, obviously last year, last year's step back season, that was a really, really tough season. The commitment back to the team, they have to come back to that team. Team, team, team. We, we, we. If they can do that this year, I think Berkeley could have a really, really special season this year. And they have a chance. I mean, Hurley, Hurley Field, you know, could be rocking again if, you know, you look at, of course, big game for them week one against Wild Lake Central. That's going to be the key game for the Berkeley Bears this season. So Berkeley, a lot of questions, a lot of, um, a lot of optimism surrounding the Bears this year. So there's going to be a lot of questions coming into the year for them. Okay, now let's go from Berkeley. Let's go to Ferndale. I mean, when you look at the Eagles, you look at them. Last year, last team in Division II, made the playoffs. Um, young team, got a big transfer coming in there from Bloomfield Hills. So here is, and also some changes in the coordinator spot. So here is Ferndale coach Eric Royal talking about the Eagles this upcoming season. Uh, first, I want to thank Coach Vernon, the Rochester Athletic Department in high school for hosting this event. Uh, it really is a great event to showcase the uh, tremendous amount of talent in our league um, and also to highlight some of the um, excellent jobs the coaches are doing leading their programs uh, in our league. Um, Ferndale football is um, going to look a little different this year as, long as, our, as well as our league. I think um, three of the five teams in our league have new coaches uh, coming in to start this year. Um, and I'm bringing in two new coordinators, so that's almost four teams in our league that are going to have a brand new look that uh, none of their other opponents are going to be too familiar with. So um, that's going to be an interesting thing to see how the teams come each and every Friday night um, and what new schemes they're going to be running. Um, but I, we're excited about the new schemes that we're running, bringing in a former head coach from Cross and Lex. It's like having two head coaches on my staff right now, which is really able to implement a lot of new uh, things to our teams, uh, pick a lot of different ideas and go with the best idea to help us get better. So we're very excited about that. Um, talking about that, actually Coach LeGrow is actually up there with us right now. He's our new offensive coordinator. Um, and we have Darnell Lee, he's our junior, a returning two-year varsity player. Um, he's going to be playing, starting on defense at, at the safety position and getting a lot of reps at the wide receiver position. Um, next we have Gary Maxwell. Is also is going to be a three-year varsity starter for us. Uh, he has seven career interceptions already, and I think a total of about 19 career starts. Um, so he's poised to have a, a breakout year this year. Had a great off-season, um, not only in the weight room but in the 707 circuit uh, with the off-season programs he's in. There. Um, next here to my left is Jaden Mills, also a junior. Um, Jaden is going to be potentially a two-way starter for us this year at the cornerback and wide receiver position. Um, had a tremendous offseason, really increasing his strength. He played varsity for us last year, um, did miss like four games with a leg injury, um, but really locked in this offseason, and I think he's going to have a, a true breakout year. Um, next, next after him is Cullen Hawk. Cullen is going to be playing um, quarterback for us this year, just transferred in this year. Um, very excited about him. He's also only going to be a junior, so again, um, we're, we're young. And actually, uh, last but not least, is our only senior that I brought today is Leander Neal, he goes by LJ. Um, he is our returning leading uh, receiver coming back from last year. Um, LJ will be another three year varsity player. Um, so that's very exciting for us. Over the last two years, we only graduated eight seniors. So we have a lot of experience coming back. Uh, our junior class is loaded. Our senior class has some studs in there as well that are very uh, experienced playing varsity. Um, unfortunately, they took their lumps these last couple of years. So hopefully they're willing to They'll be looking forward to give some lumps out going into their junior and senior years. Um, so we're excited. Uh, I know our league is going to be very competitive like it always is. Uh, looking forward to those challenges week to week. And I hope that everyone stays healthy and good luck to everybody. Thank you. Ferndale was 22-8 and eight in a stand 
of a couple years. And then the last few years, they were very young, um, took some lumps, obviously. Then last year, got back to the Ferndale of old, getting into the playoffs last year. Players to watch for, obviously, the coordinators. Talk about Mike DeGroe. Obviously, he was, he's their new offensive coordinator. He used to be the head coach at Crosswell Lex. Um, Crosswell Lexington, really good teams up in the um, up in Santa Lac County in the Blue Water Conference, and also he brought with them obviously their defensive coordinator Michael Sheridan, um, who was also was at Crosswell Lex last year. Players to watch, obviously Colin Hawk, the, the um, transfer quarterback at Bluefield Hills. Um, he comes over from Ferndale from Bluefield Hills. Um, Leander Neal, obviously at wide receiver, defensive back. Darnell Wee's another guy to watch. Marco Walker. Up front, um, Bryce Ferguson at linebacker, Antonio Jones at linebacker, Gary Maxwell in the secondary, um, Dakari Smith running the ball, um, Jaden Mills is another guy to watch for. So when you look at Ferndale, their expectations had to be high, sky high through the roof. I mean, I had I talked to Coach Royal on the podcast a couple weeks ago, um, expressing his excitement about this team, the direction of the team. Um, but I also got an interview with Coach Royal talking about the, um, the expectations of Ferndale football going forward. I got the coach of the Eagles here, Coach Eric Royal here. Coach, um, we were, of course, you were on the podcast a couple weeks ago. Um, talk about how everything's been lately for you guys. Um, actually, we had a really strong summer. I mean, very, very happy with the way our boys uh, worked hard in the summertime. We had a great competition throughout our 7-on-7 circuit. Um, they picked up our new schemes surprisingly well and fast, so that is very encouraging moving forward to um, the, the start of the season. So I'm very excited. Talk about your schedule. It's not an easy one. You look at Macomb last Cruz to open up the year. I mean, talk about how the schedule was for you guys. Uh, like every year when you play in the OA schedule, uh, the, the in-league is going to be tough, and then we try to – Try to uh, schedule some tougher auto league opponents with Lance Cruz making it to the regional final last year. Um, we just we just want to be prepared that like like one of the coaches said today, if we, we make it to week ten, we know we'll be battle tested and ready to try to make some moves in the playoffs. What are the expectations this year, coach? Um, we want to compete for our league championship again this year, uh, defend our league championship and punch our ticket to the playoffs. Thank you real much, coach. Thank you. Of course, Ferndale, of course, won the gold last year. Um, they ma they're making strides next year. I'm this year, I'm curious to see what the next step's going to look for Ferndale. Um, they got the weapons, they got the talent to be to win this division again, and can they make the next step? That is the big time question when you look at Ferndale. Um, the schedule looks very interesting. Week one, open up with Macomb Lance Cruz. It's a rematch of a 27-26 win for the Lancers over the Eagles last year. Now, for, now Macomb Lance Cruz has to make a, the trip down to Ferndale to take on the Eagles. Um, of course, Macomb Lance Cruz, they got a new coach in there, um, new system in there. So they're going to be going through a, coaching transit, through a coaching transition. So that's going to be really interesting how that matchup goes. Week two, get to go up to Holly to take on the Broncos. I mean, this is going to be a tough match for Ferndale because one, going up in the Northwest Oakland County, not an easy matchup there. Now, what does help in the matchup, obviously, is both coordinators are come over from Crosswell Lex, which is in Santa Lac County. So they know the North pretty well. But Holly, much different animal. Obviously, you look at Billy Keenis there. You look at Dave Two as the defensive coordinator there. Holly's got some loaded talent. I mean, obviously, you know they had a lot of success the last couple of years under Keenis and under Tooley. Difficult matchup for Ferndale in that one there, especially having to go up north, up by 75 in the Northwest Oakland County. That is going to be a difficult matchup for the um, for um, Ferndale going up there. Week three, take on Pontiac. Um, Pontiac, Ferndale's had Pontiac's number the last few years. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how that matchup goes. Week four, I think it's the matchup to decide the division. Um, with Avondale and Ferndale, of course, we know the history there. The road teams won that matchup usually traditionally. Um, I think the matchup at Ferndale this year, um, actually at Avondale this year, so it'll be very interesting to see how that one goes um, in that one there. Week 5, Royal Oak rivalry game. I remember a couple years ago when Royal Oak upset Ferndale, and I got a lot of criticism from that. Um, but Ferndale, a lot of experience, a lot of talent. Royal Oak obviously going through a coaching transition, going to go through a... Um, 
you know, going through a transition period. They're going to be very young this year. Um, and then week number six, they take on Berkeley. Um, this one's going to be an interesting matchup. It's a rivalry game, obviously. Ferndale won that one last year against Berkeley. Of course, um, I think this year's match is at Hurley this year. So I'm curious to see how that one goes there. Um, week number seven, Oak Park. I mean, the question, this is going to be very interesting. It's both teams have a lot of athletes. Both teams are fast. They're both skilled. I think this is a big game for Ferndale going against a team like Oak Park, you know, playing in the blue division. It's going to be tough there. Um, October 13th, Groves. This is going to be interesting because question is, how is Ferndale's depth going to be against a team like Groves? who's got a very good D1 lineman in Avery Gotch, proven experienced quarterback in Kane Hardy. You got Zach Rogers. You got, I mean, they got some athletes over there in Groves. I mean, like, it's going to be interesting there between Ferndale and Groves. I mean, like, I really think that the Eagles in the Falcons, this could be a very good game between those two teams. And then October 20th, they take on St. Clair Shores Lakeshore. Um, rematch of a game last year, I think that was won by Ferndale. That got, it actually got Ferndale into the playoffs. It was a big win at the time for the Eagles that got them in at that last team in Division Two. So when you look at Ferndale this year, you know, I think they're going to, I think the sky's the limit for this team. Proven quarterback in Colin Hawk, ready to take over, proven experience everywhere. Um, the only question I have with Ferndale is going to be the, um, is depth. That's the big question I have with them. Um, obviously, you have the co op program with Ferndale and Ferndale U. Um, so when you really look at the Eagles, I think there's a lot of excitement with Ferndale, especially when you look at from the past when they were 22 and eight. Yes, they had their downs last two years, but I think this team's back. I, I think Ferndale is going to be a team that nobody wants to see come the postseason. The only question I have with Ferndale is, are they ready to play some of the upper echelon teams, especially in Division Two? And I think playing a team like Groves Week Eight is going to really test where they're at, especially come postseason time. Because last year they ran into Seaholm. They didn't fare very well in that game against Seaholm. So I think playing Groves Week 8 for them is going to be a test to see where they're at come postseason time. So I think with Ferndale, a lot of expectations with them. Really excited to see how Ferndale does when you look at the Eagles this season. Um, a lot of excitement. Obviously the coordinator's there. Um, going to more of a spread look is going to be very important for Ferndale. Um, I think to use their athletes. So really, really high on the Eagles this year. Um, there's going to be, you know, yes, they're going to go through the transition, but it looks like according to Royal, the transition has gone pretty well. So when you look at Ferndale, there's a lot of expectations this year. And I think Ferndale, I think they're going to meet those expectations. And you have a quarterback like Colin Hawk, I think the expectations are a little bit going higher. So that's my take on Ferndale. So let's look at Pontiac. I mean, obviously when you look at the Pontiac Phoenix, this is a team that five and 91 since 2011, 42 game losing streak, longest in the state. They hadn't made a new, it made a coaching change this off, um, off season. Um, Wendell Jefferson takes over the reins at Pontiac. Um, so when you look at Pontiac, you know, it's just building the culture back, building a program back. So here is Coach Wendell Jefferson and his and his new assistant coaches up at the podium. Good uh, evening, good afternoon, everyone. I'm happy to be here. Um, I brought a couple players. I'm trying to check their eligibility out, um, but <laughs> no, honestly, um, I am here. It's my first year. I don't know if you ever had a uh, situation where you had an opportunity to to get your very um, the job that you've always wanted. And I'm from Pontiac, I've lived in Pontiac, I've watched, I watched the uh, sports teams as I've been living there, and I've always, want, I said one day I'll be able to, to coach that school and input what I've learned over all the years. Um, as we know, a lot of you know that the, the numbers at Pontiac are not what you would like them to be. So what I'm doing and what we're doing is we're teaching these young men how to win. We're teaching them what it takes, how much work you have to put in to being great. It's a consistency to it that you have to have. You have to be dedicated and you have to work. I can say that so far, uh, with these young men, they've 
they've learned how to work. They've learned how to work. Now we just have to get it on a consistent, consistent um, plane and make sure uh, that they learn everything they need to learn. Uh, there's a lot uh, that they need to learn. I'm excited about them. Uh, we have some athletes. Uh, we don't have linemen. That's what I'm trying to get coached to play. Um, but we're looking for more linemen. But the biggest thing is we want to drum up um, support through the community uh, and let everyone know that these young men are working hard. And, and then everyone will start staying in Pontiac to play for our school. They've put a lot of money into the facilities. We have new things going on. Uh, and, and these kids deserve it. So I don't really have much to say about who we are at this point as far as on the football field because everything is new. I'm not, I don't, I don't push a certain system on, t on guys. I need to learn what they do best. Uh, so I don't have much information for you on that, but I'm looking forward to uh, competing with all the teams that we have this year and um, helping these young men grow. Uh, this is Coach Al Manfroni, he's my offensive coordinator. Uh, coach Montel Johnson, who is my assistant head coach, quarterback coach. And I'd like for them to speak for a minute because I'm happy to be here, so I'll let them talk. One of the things that we uh, had to start with when you're rebuilding a program is we had to start by evaluating what we have. Um, we don't have the luxury of knowing what we had or what uh, happened last year. Uh, we know what the record was, but you know, unfortunately, it doesn't help you when you're evaluating talent, you're evaluating what you, what, what you can do, uh, and so on. So we have spent the last several months just evaluating what kids we have uh, and what they're capable of and what they're capable of doing. Um, we ran a seven on seven uh, in a the first that we've had, uh, four-way seven-on-seven, and uh, remarkably, uh, the kids did incredible. Um, we have uh, a quarterback that I would probably tell you is in the top ten in Oldman County. Uh, he's, he's a phenomenal athlete. He is the consummate dual threat, and, um, you know, I look for great things from him. So, again, not much to say except we'll be competitive. I don't know, you know, much more than that, but uh, hopefully some, we'll see some of you on the field uh, relatively shortly. And once again, I'm Montel Johnson. I'm assistant head coach, quarterback coach, and the strength conditioning coordinator. I'm one of the only two coaches that has, that has been on the staff for the last few years that actually came back for this year, and from the time I've got there to the time we are now, we've seen a drastic improvement. The uh, first couple of years, we were tearing the program down, rebuilding the guys, restructuring. This is the second year that Pontiac has had an off-season strength and conditioning program. So we, we're really excited. We're really excited about coming out of that, going into the season. Um, like Coach said, we have a great quarterback coming back. We have a couple of great receivers that um, has has some off-the-field issues last year that they wasn't able to play. So we're excited about getting them guys back and just being able to teach these guys the true game of football. And we look forward to the season coming up. Thank you, everyone. Pontiac does have some questions this year, but they do return a quarterback in Kanye Donaldson. We know how good he is. They also got some Kevin Key players back, I'm curious to see, like players like Famari Jeffrey at wide receiver. Also, Marcus McCoy up front. I mean, there's a lot of questions with Pontiac obviously the coaching transition you know looking at the history the 5 and 91 since 2011 the 42 game losing streak longest in the state um but there's a lot of optimism with them um, coach Jefferson and his team so I caught up in an interview with coach Jefferson talking about Pontiac football and his vision for the future I got Pontiac coach Wendell Jefferson here I'm taking over a program that's with 5 and 91 since 2011. Um, so talk about how the changes you've made this offseason for Pontiac. Well, the, the first changes I made, I, I hired a staff, and we have uh, probably 11 man staff, uh, and they are all um, dedicated and work hard. So I had to start with that first because these kids need the attention that they, that, that mm -hmm. they deserve. So we, um, 
we start with the basics. Mm -hmm. We really do. We had to start with the basics, teaching them what it takes to win, and that's the work ethic that they need, the consistency of that work ethic, and then also uh, the attitude that they have with it. So they've improved, um, and, and they're actually doing pretty good. Talk about Kanye, obviously, the quarterback. I mean, like, Pontiac's a big um, – it's, it's going to be interesting. I mean, um, how's the schedule looking for you guys as well? As far as the schedule goes, I mean, I, I don't like to talk wins and losses. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that we'll be we'll be competitive in each game. Uh, Kanye is doing great. Uh, I'm happy to have him. We have two more years with him. Um, one of the things it takes to win offensively is having a quarterback, and we have one. Uh, so I'm, I'm very happy with that. Uh, I would like to get more linemen, uh, people to block for him. Uh, but I think we're ahead of the game when it comes to the quarterback position. What is your expectation this year, Coach? <laughs> expectation is just to work hard, right? Just to, to get better each day, um, be competitive, win the games that, that we're supposed to win. I mean, quite honestly, personally, I know that, that the undefeated or the winless streak will be over. Um, I really do believe that. We're going to win a game or two or three or four. <laughs> However, um, my main thing is setting the foundation uh, for the future, making sure that everyone understands what it takes to truly be a great student athlete. Thank you really much, Coach. Thank you. When you look at Pontiac, you know, there's a, you know, you look at, of course, the, the, the losing streak, the records. I mean, the, the, I mean, like, you know, just building the program. I mean, program strength is something I'm really curious to see what Pontiac, what Coach Jefferson does this year when you look at Pontiac. Um, it's going to be interesting. When you look at the schedule this year for Pontiac, it looks favorable. I mean, like, they have a chance to snap the streak. Um, I don't know if it'll be week one, though, against Madison Heights Bitch Boy, because the Ventures are a very good team. And Pontiac's got to go to Madison Heights this year, which is going to make it really tough. Um, I think this is where they snap the streak. And you could put it on, you could put it right now. I think the streak ends September 1st when they take on Detroit Lincoln King Academy. The reason why, Lincoln King Academy went 0 9 last year. They really struggled. And I think when you look at the development Pontiac's at, it's, it's at home for Pontiac. They have a great opportunity here, I think, to snap the streak. And, you know, and I can just imagine, you know, I, I mean, like if Pontiac wins that game September 1st, I'm going to be really, really happy because that program has, they have, they, they've suffered. I mean, like it's really what it's been. So I really think that game September 1st, I mean, I, I don't like to make bets here on the, on the previous show here, but. It wouldn't surprise me if they snapped that 42 game losing streak against um, Detroit Lincoln King Academy. I, I really think Pontiac's got a great chance to do that. Um, week three, it's going to be tough for them going against Ferndale. Um, when you look at the Eagles, I mean, Pont we know Ferndale's loaded with proven experience, um, proven talent, obviously. Um, week four, I think they have a chance here in this game against Royal Oak. I think the reason why is because Royal Oak's going through a coaching transition. Um, obviously, these are both teams going through coaching transitions. Of course, Pontiac's was in a more tougher situation than Royal Oaks is, but I think that could be another winnable game for Pontiac is that game September 15th against Royal Oak. So that'll be really interesting, and that game's at Pontiac. So it'll be very interesting how that matchup goes between those two teams. September 22nd against Berkeley, this one could be interesting because you know, battle of the quarterbacks between Sonny Cabbage and Connie Donaldson. Um, if this could be a game, I really think this could be. I mean, it's at Pontiac. Um, I think it could be a competitive game between those two teams, between the Bears and the Phoenix. Um, so that could be another opportunity there for, um, for Pontiac to get another victory. Um, September 29th, the top match against Troy Athens. Um, it'll be interesting to see how they do. Considering, you know, Troy Athens is a bigger school than Pontiac. Um, it'll be very interesting there. Um, and then October is just brutal. I mean, we, they play North Farmington week seven. That's going to be a tough matchup for them. Um, and I think that game's at Ron Holland, which makes it really, really tough there. And then week eight, they go to Auburn Hills to take on Avondale. Um, again, another tough matchup there for um, Pontiac. Um, and then they close out the year week nine 
in Garden City against um, Garden City against the Cougars. Um, Garden City beat Pontiac last year. They were a playoff team a year ago. Um, so when you look at Pontiac, their schedule, I could see maybe two, maybe three, maybe four wins on that schedule. I really do. I mean, with Pontiac, you know, just trying to get that program back in the thick of it, <coughs> trying to get back in the thick of it, being competitive. I think Pontiac's got a great opportunity here ahead of them if they stay healthy to be very competitive. I think this is the year they snap the losing streak. I think week two, keep a real close eye on that game against Lincoln King Academy. I think that's where the streak ends. And I think that's where could be a changing point for Coach Wendell Jefferson and his team this year is, is that game against, against Detroit Lincoln King Academy. I've got high expectations. I'm looking forward to see how Pontiac does this year. Um, I think Pontiac could be a team that they could, they could surprise some people this year in this division. I really think they could be. They're a team I'm keeping a real close eye on this year. So when you look at Pontiac football, you know, you look at all the bad, but there's a lot of positive. When you look at Pontiac, they, they got new facilities there. I mean, new program, new style. So a lot to look forward to if you're, coach, if you're in the community of Pontiac. I think Pontiac's going to really surprise some folks this year. I really do think that. And I hope, you know, and I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope, you know, Pontiac football is back to where they need to be. Um, let's go down from Pontiac and let's go to Royal Oak. Um, this offseason, I mean, last year was like a complete, it, it was a disaster. I mean, they won two games. Um, they had some positives, obviously. They did lose some key players. Um, but the final three games was a, was a, you know, they were outscored 125 to nothing. Um, they had a coaching change at the week seven. Of course, it's been on the, it was on the local news. Um, also, you know, you lose some key players as well. You lose, you lose Ellie Finch, you lose Mikhail Jenkins, you lose Hudson Seidel. That's going to be a big loss for Royal Oak. So here's Royal Oak coach um, Colin Campbell at the podium talking about the Ravens. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Colin Campbell. I'm the new head coach at Royal Oak. Uh, it's an honor to be here today. Uh, we want to thank Coach Vernon and uh, Rochester Schools for having us out. This is a great event, and we're really excited to be here. Uh, on my left, I have Aiden Tesh. He's uh, starting uh, offensive and defensive lineman for us. I got Mike Herman. Uh, he's a safety linebacker, uh, quarterback, running back, plays a lot of stuff for us. Uh, Colt Deshay, he's a quarterback and uh, safety for us. And then Sam Clonky, uh, tight end and defensive end for us. Uh, like I said, we're excited to be here. We're excited for the opportunity to compete every week. It's a tough league, it's a deep league, and we're just excited to be a part of it. And I hope everybody has a good season, safe season. Best of luck to everybody. Thank you. When you look at Royal Oak, and the numbers are just not pretty. I mean, 29 105 since 2008, 6 and 28 since 2018. That's not good. That is not good. Now, when you look at Royal Oak this year, you know, I'm curious to see how Campbell does with this program. Of course, he was the interim coach at the week seven. Now he is the full, he is the, um, he's the um, full coach now for the Ravens this year. Of course, the interim tag was removed back in January. So I caught up with Campbell to talk about the Ravens and see what direction they're gonna go. I got the coach of the Ravens, Colin Campbell here. Um, coach, um, you know, you're looking at, you were the interim coach the last three games of the year. Stats were not pretty. Um, yeah. Obviously, um, how's the offseason been for you guys? Uh, it's been good. Uh, kids are coming out, working hard, consistent group, hard workers, and we're just excited to get things going on Monday and get real football happening. Talk about your quarterback situation. People look at a course. It's going to be hard replacing three very good players from that team, from, from your team from last year. Um, what, is, what is the, what is the um, how's everything been for you? Uh, it's been good. I mean, yeah, we're, we're replacing a lot of talent and, you know, there's no denying that, right? I mean, that, that's part of it. We got kids that um, we've coached before on our JV group a couple years ago that are hard workers. So there's a quarterback battle happening and we're excited to see who's going to win. What is the expectation this year, Coach? Expectations to compete. It's a deep league. It's a tough league. We're going to come out every week. We're going to be physical. We're going to be tough and we're going to be ready to go. And we're going to be prepared. Thank you really much, Coach. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. When you look at Royal Oak, players to watch, Steven Johnson at running back slash linebacker, Aiden Tesh. Um, the quarterback battle between Mike Herman and Colin O'Shea, Colton O'Shea is the battle to watch. At quarterback, Anthony Garcia up front. 
So when you look at Royal Oak, there's some questions this year when you look at the Ravens. Um, the schedule looks daunting. I mean, when you look at that schedule and you look at there's three teams on that schedule in the non-conference that were just absolutely like, um, you know, between respectively between Holly, Troy, and Madison Heights Lampier, Royal Oak was outscored in those against those three teams last season by a combined 132 to nothing. That is just unheard of stats. Just unheard of. So when you look at the schedule, you got Holly coming to Royal Oak, which is going to be very interesting. Um, of course, as I mentioned with Holly, they do have, um, they do have, of course, they're well coaching the coach Billy Keenest. Also, they have a very good defensive coordinator, Dave Tooley, former defensive coordinator at Lake Orion. Um, it's going to be a difficult match for Royal Oak in that one, going against a very good Holly program. It's going to be tough for them in that one. Uh, week two, they take on Taylor. Of course, um, Taylor, of course, they've had their struggles this year. Last season, they had their struggles. So that's a winnable game for Royal Oak right there. And it's at Royal Oak as well. So, you know, so when you look at the schedule there, it wouldn't surprise me if they start one and one um, in that stretch. And then September 8th, they got to go to Troy. I mean, this is going to be interesting because Royal Oak was blown out 42 nothing last year by Troy. And it was rough. I mean, it was really rough. And you look at Troy, they got, they, got, they got the quarterback back, they got the running back back. It's going to be difficult. And Royal Oak's got a very young team, so that's going to make it really difficult for them in that matchup there. September 15th, I think that's a trap game for Royal Oak going to Pontiac to take on the Phoenix. Um, I just think when you look at the word trap game, Pontiac's got it written all over it. Because, yes, Royal Oak's had success, you know, against Pontiac, but I think this Pontiac team's a little bit different now than people think. I mean, like, obviously, under new coach Wendell Jefferson, um, they do have a quarterback in Connie Donaldson. I mean, this is going to be an interesting matchup between the Ravens and the um, Phoenix. September 22nd, go back to Ferndale. They take on Ferndale. Of course, I remember that game. The last time they went there, Royal went and upset Ferndale, and that was a stunner in that one there, too, in that one. Um, September 29th, they take on Avondale. Um, again, it's a top match for them. Wing T, obviously, Avondale. You know, and then, they, and then they have all those wide receiving athletes there. So it'll be a tough match for Coach Campbell and the Ravens in that one. October 6th, they take on Troy Athens. Again, another top matchup going up against another very good quarterback, very, very, very good experienced quarterback in um, Parker Sherla. I mean, that'll be very interesting there in that one. Um, week number eight, they take on Berkeley. Of course, that one's going to be at, um, I think that one's at Royal Oak this year. So that'll be a very interesting match. The Battle of Woodward, um, the, of course, the street sign. You have either Lexington or Catalpa. I know Royal Oaks had lost the last, the last two, three meetings against Berkeley, um, including a playoff game back in 2020. And then they close out the year, October 20th, the trip to Madison Heights to take on the Ransom Madison Heights Lampier. Again, Lampier just destroyed Royal Oak last year, 42 nothing. I mean, it was bad. I mean, like, it was really, really bad. I remember watching that game on CMN TV, and it was just, it was rough to watch. I watched a couple Royal Oak games this year. I mean, last year I watched the Troy game. I watched the Lampier game. I mean, it was just rough go for Royal Oak. And when you look at the Ravens this year, it might be another rough goal for, uh, for them this year because considering how young they are, the experience, and of course the teams are playing. Obviously, as I mentioned earlier, the three teams, Holly, Troy, and Lampier, won 32 to nothing in those three games last year. And, you know, you look at Royal Oak this year, they could have some struggles this season. So that's my take on Royal Oak. Um, so let's look at, of course, the um, projections. Obviously, when you look at the projections this year, these are hot off the presses here. I've got projected playoff teams highlighting this division. I got Ferndale. I got Avenue winning the division this year. I, I just think the reason why is because Bob Myers done a really good job with that team. Um, I, I just think when you look at at Avondale, they got the makings of a very good team here. I think they have a chance to do very well. Ferndale, I got them at five and four. There's a couple of reasons why. Their non-conference is brutal. I mean, like it is tough when you play. Teams like Oak Park, Groves are on there. That's going to be tough there. I think they're going to be, they could overachieve. I think five is a pretty good point for them. But if they can go six or seven, don't be surprised they go six or seven. Um, Berkeley, 
the schedule, I'm not too fond of with the schedule. I mean, I think it'll be interesting if they get four wins. Um, I just think it'll be very interesting to see how, how that happens there. Royal Oak, I got them at two and seven because last year at two and seven, now it wouldn't surprise me if they go one and three or zero oh and four. It really wouldn't surprise me if they go zero oh and four. Um, but Pontiac, I think I'm giving Pontiac a little bit. You know, I'm not giving them a little bit more respect than I think I'm giving them. But I think Pontiac could win maybe two. I think they win two for sure. Maybe three, maybe four. I think Pontiac could do. They could surprise some people. I think Pontiac out of this whole division this year could be a team that's up on the upside. I think Pontiac's a team to really watch for going forward, and I think that's a team to really watch for when you look at Pontiac. So now here is my official top 10 teams to start off the presses. Of course, when you look at the gold division, of course, you have Avondale. I had them 10 to start the year. I have Ferndale ranked 9 to start the year. And I think when you look at the rankings to start off the year, um, obviously, when you look at the top 10, um, I've got West Bloomfield the top team, A&T ranked second. I got Lake Orion third. Um, they we're going to have to make a little change here with Harper Woods. I have Harper Woods at four to start the year, followed by Clarkson, then Adams, then Groves, and Seaholm before we talk Ferndale and Avondale. I have Ferndale ranked ninth, Avondale ranked tenth to start the year. So that is the preseason top ten to start the year. So make sure when you look at the rankings this week, you know, follow the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com and we'll take care of everything going forward there. All right, everybody, I'm going to sign it off here. I wish everybody the best of luck in the gold division this year as we, as we kick off the 2023 high school football season. Of course, take care, God bless, and I'll see you all next week, everybody, to talk the OA Blue. Take care and see you all then.